of the Lord. Amen. Thankful for the anointing that I feel. And I, don't, I don't want to ever take that for granted. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. My, my, my. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Worthy. hallelujah. So thankful Worthy. for the anointing of the Lord. <laughs> Turn with Amen. me in your Bible to Joshua, the 24th chapter and the 14th verse. Joshua, the 24th chapter, the 14th verse. Joshua 24 and 14. While walking around these pews during a time of prayer <clears throat> a few days ago, the Lord spoke a word into my spirit. And He took me to this passage of Scripture right here. The more you talk to people, the more you hear from people, the more you realize what people are facing and what they're going through. Come on. The more you realize if we ever lived in an hour of decision, Brother Dave, today right. is that day. True. Amen. True. If we ever lived in a time where people were having to choose Come on. to go on or choose to give up, right. we are living in that day today. We find Joshua standing before the children of Israel telling them it's their time. Now is their time to choose. Come on. This day. Yeah. Joshua 24 and 14 says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him sincerely. In sincerity, I'm sorry. And in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Now we know that Egypt is always a picture of the world. Amen. We know today that there's always something pulling at mankind. Even after you've accepted the Lord, even after you've been born again, there's always something pulling at you trying to get you to turn away. Trying to get you to go back. Amen. And Joshua is telling these people, to serve the Lord. Put away the gods that they once served on the other side of the flood. Put away the gods that they once served in Egypt. Then he makes this statement in Joshua, the 24th chapter, the 15th verse. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Right. As for me and my house, Amen. Come on. We will serve the Lord. Right. Joshua saw in the people of that day the same thing you see in the people of our day. People that are not sure if they want to go on or if they want to give up. People that are struggling with things. People that are hurting. You might say to me, what in the world does that have to do with us today? It has a lot to do with us today. Because Joshua said, choose you today. Right now, this day. Choose who you will serve. And if we've ever lived in a day, if we've le ever lived in an hour of decision, on, we are living in that day today. Right. Amen? True. In Joel, the third chapter, the 14th verse, only going to read one verse there. You don't have to go. Very familiar to you. You can go there if you want to. Joel, the third chapter, the 14th verse. The Bible says, Multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Now I know the latter day implications of that scripture. You don't have to email me. You don't have to write me. You don't have to call me and let me know that in this Joel was seeing a judgment in the end times. A judgment there in that valley that would take place by the Lord. But as with this scripture, as with many scriptures in the word of God, there's more than one way to look at it. Yes. Many scriptures have a twofold meaning. Can be taught twofold. A lot of scriptures can be taught a lot more than just twofold. Right. Because the word of God is so deep. Yes. But even though I know the judgment and I know the latter day implications of that scripture, I also know. 
Come on. That is surely as that is true, it is also true that we in this life go through valleys. Amen. And that it is during those valleys, it is during those times that the decisions that we make are the most crucial decisions in our journey with the Lord. Amen. The most crucial decisions that you will ever make in your journey with the Lord will not necessarily be made on the mountaintop, mm -hmm. but will be made in the heat of the battle. Come on. They will be made in the darkness of the valley. Amen? You're right. The Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same Amen. shall be saved. Right. It says that because in this life we will have to endure things. The preacher that smiled from ear to ear this morning so wide and looked like he's going to swallow his earlobes, him telling you everything is fine, everything's going to always be fine, you're never going to go through anything, is not the truth. Right. You are going to face things. You are going to face battles in this life. The Bible, listen, getting saved, getting born again, does not give you a get out of tribulation free card to where you'll never go through any trials in this life. Amen. It does not give you a, a, a get out of afflictions free card where you'll never have to go through anything. As a matter of fact, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. It doesn't say the Lord keeps him from having to go through any of them. It says he delivers him out of them all. Amen? Amen. He didn't say you wouldn't go through anything, but thank God, Brother David, we can hold on to the promise this morning that we don't have to go through them alone. Amen? Amen. Right. He is with you right where you're at. Yes, sir. But he will not make the choice for you on. to go on. True. In the valley that you're in, you will have to choose. Right. You will have to decide. It's your hour of decision. It's your hour of choosing. Amen? True. And rest assured, if you're not there today, you will be at one point or another. Yes. Sooner or later, all of us face an hour of decision. Right. More than once. Come on. Amen? Come on. This is not just, well, I went through that valley, it's all over, the rest of my life's going to be great, and I'm not going to have to go through anything. We're going to face these times of decision. Yes. Are we going to sit down? Are we going to go on? Are we going to give up? Are we going to keep on pressing? Are we going to lose faith? Are we going to stand and trust on His Word? Even whenever we can't feel it, we can't see Him, we can't smell it, we don't even believe He's around. Are we going to hold on? Are we going to stand on, on His Word? Come on, preach. Peter would say, Beloved, think it not strange Amen. concerning the fiery trial, Amen. which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. That's 1 Peter 4 and 12. All right. In other words, don't think it's a strange thing when the trial comes. As a matter of fact, it's more strange if you don't have any trials. Amen. Amen. Don't think it a strange thing because the trial has come. Because that's exactly, listen, I know many of you out there under the sound of my voice that are watching this video, that are listening by radio, you can relate to what I'm saying because that's exactly where you're at. Come on. You are in the heat of the battle. And countless people I talk to, and I talk to people all the time. Come on. Almost everyone, very rarely do I talk to anybody. Come on. Who don't say something about what they're going through something. Amen? Right. Very rarely do I find anybody where everything is going fine. Right. Everything they touch is gold. Right. Everything is going great for them. No. Right. More times than not, people right. you talk to say, I've really been going through it lately. Amen. I'm really going through a trial, Brother Dave. Right. I'm really going through a valley. True. I'm really going through darkness. No matter how you describe it, it's the same situation. Amen? Right. You're going through a fight. Come on. And there are going to be those times in your life. Right. We learned very early on in our spiritual walk with the Lord that there are mountaintops and there are valleys. Amen. Come on. And you ain't going to stay on the mountaintop all the time. True. And the most important decisions that you make are made in the valley. Right. Today you're walking through a trial. You're going through something that may be the hardest thing you've ever faced in your life. True. And it's right there. Right in the heat of the battle. Right, right in the heat of the fight. Come on. That the decision that you make is the most important decision that you'll ever make. The decision you make in the fight that you're in right now may decide your spiritual fate. You say, preacher, are you telling me that I won't have another opportunity? No, I'm telling you, you're not promised another opportunity. 
If you make the wrong decision where you're at now, you are not promised another visitation from the Lord. You are not promised another day to change your mind. Amen? So if you decide to give up, if you decide to sit down, if you decide to go back, through His mercy, you may have another chance to choose, but you're not promised another chance to choose. Amen. None of us. Right. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. None of us are promised tomorrow. None of us are promised another opportunity to make this decision. That's what makes this decision so important to your spiritual survival. Right, right there in the heat of the battle, right there in the heat of the fight, you are going to have to choose. Is He there with you? Yes. Will He ever leave you? No. But He will not choose for you. He will not choose for you. We talked a couple of Tuesdays ago, I think it was about the faithful servant. That servant is faithful because he chooses to be faithful. True. Amen? True. You will be faithful to church because you choose to come to church. Right. God will not drag you to church. Amen? Amen? You will be faithful to put your tithe and your offering in the offering plate. Right. God is not a pickpocket. Amen. If you don't give it, He will not take it from you. Amen? Right. You choose to be faithful in your walk with Him. If you have a prayer life, it's because you choose to have a prayer life. If you study the Word of God, it's because you choose to study the Word of God. Don't you stand on Judgment Day and accuse somebody else or point the finger somewhere else. You have the decision to make today. Not anyone else. Amen. You choose whether you go on or not. That's right. You sit down somewhere in the corner and try to blame it on Brother Billy. But when you stand before God, it will be you and Him and nobody else. The choice you made. Amen. Whether you chose to go on. Whether you chose to stay and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Whether you chose to keep the faith. You remember we read about Paul? I finished my course. Right. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Why, Brother Dave? Because he chose to keep the faith. He chose to fight a good fight. He chose to finish the course that was set before him. Right. You're going to have to choose today. Yes, sir. And the time, that, the most crucial time in your walk with the Lord is that hour of decision. When yes. you decide, Yes. Oh, the battle's too hard. I ain't going to go on. Amen. Or you decide, it don't matter how bad the battle gets. It don't matter how hard the battle gets. Right. I'm going to hold to God's Amen. unchanging hand. Right. I'm going to hold to God's unchanging right. hand. Right. And we get instilled in us the same thing that Job had when he right. lost his family, when he lost his cattle, when he lost his riches. And he right. said, Though God slay me, yeah. yet will I serve Him. Oh, hallelujah. Though God slay me, Yet will I serve Him. Amen. Right in the heat of your battle. Yes. See, it's not hard when the glory's fallen right. and the water is so deep you can swim in it mm. and the blessings of the Lord are overtaking you, Brother Dave, Come on. and everything you touch is turning to gold yeah. and you're getting pats on the back right. and people puffing you up. Yeah. It's not hard then to decide to go on. Yeah. It's not hard then to decide to be faithful. Oh, but listen to me. Listen to me. When you're in the valley, when you're in the place where all you can see is darkness, right. when the only thing you hear is the echo of your own voice crying out in the darkness, why God? Why? Do you hear me this morning? For some of you out there, this is the most important message you'll ever hear. Yes. Because you are there. There is a crossroads in front of you. You choose life or you choose death. Amen. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. The Bible says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Amen. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. All right. The next choice you make Praise the Lord. may be your final choice. Amen. Amen. That's true. I don't think we really get that. I know. Amen. I don't think we really get the importance of that, Brother Dave, because we don't put a lot of thought into it. Well, I'm just going to give up. Yeah. What if you don't ever have another chance to reverse that decision? True. Amen. Amen. Now listen, I know many of you out there, many of you have, have sat down on God and His mercy has dealt with you and allowed you to get back up and go on. Yeah. And this has happened more than one time in your life, but you're not promised to ever... That's His mercy. 
Amen. Listen, you sit through altar call after altar call after altar call thinking I'll get right later. Yeah. And you're sitting out there today under the sound of this preacher's voice and you're thinking, well, I'll get right next Sunday. I'll get right the next altar call. I, I, I just can't do it yet. You're not promised another day. You're not promised another altar call. You're not promised the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. You're not promised the Spirit of God dealing with your heart again. The Bible says His Spirit will not always strive with man. Sooner or later, your chances may be over. Sooner or later, this may be your day to get called out of this life. And the last choice you made was the most definitive choice because it was your last choice. Yes, sir. Amen. That's the truth. Oh, hallelujah. That's very true. Oh, my, my, my. When all you see is darkness, Come on. you don't see the Lord. Right. You can't hear the Lord. Come on. The only thing you can hear is your prayers bouncing off of the ceiling and the wall because that's as far as you think they're getting. All right. Why God? Why, me, Why am I here? Why me? Why me, Lord? Within that time, yeah. during that hour, yeah. your most crucial decision is made. Are you going to give up? Come on. Are you going to go on? Come on. Are you going to give up? Are you going to press on through? Right. Are you going to lose faith? Come on. Are you going to say, Lord, I don't understand it. Right. You know I don't like it. Come on. But I'm going to trust you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hold to your unchanging hand. I'm going to stand on your promises. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, this gets more and more real to me as I go along in my journey with the Lord. I've told it to you before. I'll tell it to you another thousand times if the Lord allows me to stay that long. Lord, I've been in the place where I said, Lord, I don't understand it. I don't like it. But I know what your word says. I know your word says that all things work together for my good. I know that your word says even though I can't hear you all I hear is my own sobs even though it don't seem like my prayers are going no further than the ceiling I know that you said you'll never leave me you'll never forsake me but you're always with me even to the end. it's during the heat of the battle that your decisions are the most weighing decisions that you will make in your spiritual journey with the Lord amen we see this in examples with the children of Israel. Right. When things were going their way, or the way they wanted things to go, they would sing the song of Moses. Right. The horse and the rider have you drowned in the sea. But wait a minute. These same, these same people just on the other side of the river, you know what they were saying? I wish you left us in Egypt. And better that we'd lived in Egypt than to die out here in the wilderness. Yeah. Amen. So see, it's easy. When you've just seen Pharaoh conquered, listen to me. When you've just seen Pharaoh and his mighty army drowned in the midst of the Red Sea, Come on. it's easy then to do a jig and sing a dance and act Pentecostal. Yeah. But what about on the other side of the river when you see Pharaoh behind you right. and a mountain on both sides Come on. and a sea in front of you? Amen. Then what do you choose? Amen. Then what do you choose? Oh. Then what will be your decision? All right. I told you it's easy. It's easier anyway yeah. when the blessings are falling. Come on. When everything's going your way. Yeah. Oh my Lord. As I was studying this, the Lord brought the marriage vows that people take with one another oh. to my mind. And you say, Brother Billy, what in the world? Well, the Lord wrecked the Lord uses as an example his relationship with us sometimes as a man and a woman. Right. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. True. Amen. True. And in different ways, he'll use an example of a husband and a wife. Right. Whenever you stand there and you vow to each other, you say words something along these lines, I know they don't mean much anymore. All right. They still mean something to some of us. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. They still mean something to some of us. Right. Most of America could care less. True. You stand there and you say, I take you to have and to hold. From this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, for as long as we both shall live. Right. Amen. Come on. You want to know what kind of decision making we're talking about today? Right. Well, we can we can use this as an example. Choosing to be faithful when things are better. Amen. Choosing to be faithful when things are worse. Right. Choosing to be faithful when 
You're facing the richer times. Right. Ain't faced those yet, but choosing to be faithful when you're facing the poorer times. Amen? Oh. Choosing to be faithful oh, in right. times of sickness. I'm talking about to God. Amen? Oh. Choosing to be faithful right. in times of health. Amen? Right. Choosing to trust Him during the times of riches. Choosing to trust Him when you're hitting hard times. Oh. Choosing to trust Him when you're in good health. Choosing to trust Him when you're sick. Choosing to trust Him for the richer, for the poorer, for the better, for the worse. Choosing oh. to serve Him regardless of what What's going on around you or regardless of the valley that you're in or the darkness that you face or the fire that you're feeling or the trial that you're going through said God I choose to trust you hey. you're going to have to make that decision in your walk with him Yes. That's good because that valley of decision the decision you make there is the most important decision Amen. that you'll ever make in your Amen. spiritual journey right Whenever Jesus said in Matthew 25 and 21 those words that we read just a few services ago. Come on. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You see, this servant chose to be faithful. Right. This servant chose to trust his word. True. This servant chose. You don't just accidentally be faithful over a few things. You choose to be faithful oh. to Him. Amen. Oh, if you're going to go on, if you're going to endure, if you're going to make it, you're going to find yourself in times where you don't like what's going on. Oh. It don't feel good. It don't look good. You don't like it, but you choose anyway to hold to His. Brother Dave, everything ain't always went your way. Amen. And you found yourself in places where the enemy has told you, won't you just give up? It it ain't worth living. It ain't worth going on. It ain't worth the fight. It ain't worth the journey. Hallelujah. But it was at those times and I know you chose because you're still here. It's at those times that you chose to hang on anyway. Even though you didn't feel it. Even though you didn't see it. Even though you didn't understand it. Even though the battle looked harder than you could handle. You're yeah. still holding on today because you chose. You chose. You're going to have to choose today. Amen. That's the truth. You're going to have to choose today. You hit it on the head. You're going to have to choose. Right. Exactly. Can't live by feeling. True. The just do not live by feeling. Right. The just shall live by faith. Right. The just shall live Come on. by faith. Amen. Oh. Yeah, that's good preaching. And multitudes out there today under the sound of my voice. Your spiritual fate hangs upon the choice that you make right where you are right, right. now. True. You can choose to walk away. You can say it's not worth it. Come on. And you can lose it all. Right. Amen. True. And the choice that you make right now may seal your spiritual fate. That's right, brother. Because even though His mercy may allow right. you to have another opportunity, Amen. I wouldn't want to roll those dice. That's true. Do you know how many people today are in hell? Because they thought, I'll get right later. Yeah. I just don't want to live for the Lord right now. Millions, imagine. Millions hmm. thought, tomorrow, tomorrow. Would come. How many do you think live for the Lord? I believe there are people that live for the Lord and that they were faithful. Right. That they fell out of the way. True. They decided it wasn't worth it no more. Right. They decided, listen, a lot of them thought they knew better, thought they learned better. True. A lot of them thought, well, I know better now. Uh -huh. I used to believe that old fashioned stuff. Yeah. I used to believe in that Jesus stuff, but I'm, I'm a lot smarter now. Come on. And they're in hell today Amen. because of the last choice that they made was the wrong choice. Right. Amen. True. I wish we could get how sobering that fact is today. Amen. Job said in 13 and 15, oh, the book right. of Job, though he slay me. Yet will I trust in Him. I misquoted it a while ago. Though God slay me, yet will I trust in Him. See, that's better than the way I worded it. That's better than the way I worded it. I will trust in Him. Though He slay me, though I die in the midst of this journey, in the yeah. midst of this fight, Come on. I will trust You, Lord. Amen. I will trust you, Lord. The valley of decision, the hour of decision, you're facing it today, many of you. True. Many of you. 
you're going to have to say those words of this old country preacher. Lord, I don't understand it. I don't like it. But I choose to trust you. Amen. I choose to stand on your word and hold to your unchanging hand. Yes. Turn with me to Daniel the third chapter. Daniel the third chapter, probably the most, one of the most well known. If we can call it a Bible story, and I don't do that, calling it as some kind of fable. This is actual fact. Amen. But this is one of the most known accounts in all of the Word of God. The three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all right. in Daniel the third chapter, the 15th verse. See, the Bible always gives us examples. True. Amen. Fine. Always gives us examples, and Brother Davis shows us things. And Come on. See, the, during the day of Jesus, he would sit down under a shade tree and tell them a parable. We have those parables today. Aren't you glad today? Amen. All for the King James Version. Amen. Yes, right. Hallelujah. That we've got the, clo the closest that you're ever going to get to hearing those parables that he told them out there under the shade right. tree right. is right here in this exactly. book. You're not going to get any closer than Amen. that. Amen. Hallelujah. The only listen what he says. And listen what the Word of God says in Daniel 3.15. Now we know that the king had set up a statue that he had told all of the people, when you hear the sound of the music, you fall down and you worship me. There was three, the Bible says, that wouldn't do it. Hallelujah. You see, God's always going to have a remnant. Yes, sir. God's going to have some people that will make the decision to go ahead and hold on till the going on comes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hold on to the, I don't even think I knew what that, and I heard it all my life as I was growing up, laying under the church pew, sitting on the end of the church pew. Amen. Yeah. I heard Brother Hittin' said all my life, but I don't think I really knew what it was until I got in the heat of the battle. Amen. And I learned that I had to hold on till the going on comes on. Amen. I don't feel like going on, but if I hold on, oh, I will feel like going on. Later. Amen. Oh. Hold on this morning till the going on comes on. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they're being told these words. Now, if you be ready, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, at what time do you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music? You fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well, but, in other words, it'd be well with you. You'd be able to live. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? I believe those words of that puffed up, self-righteous, hypocritical king were heard all through the corridors of heaven. Amen. Who is that God? Amen. And God said, well, let's show Him. Right. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> oh my, my! Let's show him who I am. Glory to God! Moses said, "Who do I tell him? Send me." He said, "You tell him I am that I am has sent you." That's all the information you need. Amen. Hallelujah! No beginning and no end has always been. I am that I am. I could preach this morning. Hallelujah! He said, "If you worship me." Everything's going to be okay with you. Right. Devil will tell you that when you're facing the fire. If you'll just give up, things will be better for you. You know, you know what you'll find? You'll give up True. and things ain't no better for you. They're worse. Because now you ain't holding on to Jesus. Amen? Now you ain't walking with Jesus. Now you ain't got Him to lean on. Amen. Now you not only, not only do you have your problems, but now you have the guilt That's right. and the conviction of the fact that you chose to walk away from Him. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Oh, Amen. True. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the 16th verse, Daniel the third chapter, they're facing the fire. Right. They're facing the fiery furnace. True. They're facing a trial. This is their hour of decision right here. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. This is their valley of decision. This is their hour to choose, Brother Dave. Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Listen to me. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. 
Now that sounds like shouting words there, don't it? Amen. That sounds like something we can get in agreement with. Right. But they take it a step farther. This wouldn't go good in the face of the power of positive thinking churches we see today. They said, but if not, but if he don't. I know, listen, it's one thing for you to stand and say, God's going to deliver me out of this. God's going to set me free from this. God's going to get me out of here. He's going to deliver me. It's all going to be over. It's another thing to say that I know God's able. Brother Dave, but if he don't, I'm still going to trust him. Amen. My Lord and my God. If he don't, oh, hallelujah. But if he don't, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I wish we could stand toe to toe with the devil today and say, listen, I know that God will, listen, it'd be better off if we look down here because that's where he's supposed to be. I know that God is more than able to deliver, to deliver me. I know he will deliver me. But guess what, devil? If he don't, Yes. If we don't, I'm still not going to go back. I'm still not going to go back. Oh, hallelujah. I'm still not going to go back to those bridges I done burned. I still am going to hold to God's unchanging hand. I'm still going to press on. Hallelujah. I know God's able. I know He will. But if we don't, I'm still going on. I'm still going to press. I'm still going to be faithful. I'm still going to choose to trust Him. Come on, hurry. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Maybe I need preachers for me this morning. Devil, I know that God is able. I know that He will, but if He don't, if I go down, I'll go down trusting Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If He don't, if He don't, I choose to trust Him. My Lord. My Lord. If He don't, I still ain't going to bow. I know that I'm facing a trial like I've never faced before. I know that I've prayed and I've prayed and it seemed like no prayers are getting answered. I know that the more I pray, the darker it seems to get. I know that the more I pray, the worse things seem. Anybody ever been there before? Amen. The more you pray, the worse things seem to get. And I know all that. I know that. But I still trust the Lord. Yes. Oh, my Lord. Amen. I know you're out there today and it seems like that's where you're at. Come on, preach. Trust Him. Amen. Trust Him. Yes. Your hour of decision is here. Decide Amen. to choose to trust Him. Right. They said it don't matter what you do to us. We're not going to serve your gods. We're not going to worship you. What's it say in verse 19, Mama? It says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. If you want to make the devil mad, just decide to trust Jesus no matter what he throws at you. It says that the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was fighting mad. That's what we'd say here in Kentucky. All right. Listen to what the king says. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Come on. Turn the heat up. Yeah. Oh, That's what the devil. When you're in the fire, when you're in the battle, right. he's like, they won't worship me. They won't turn back. Mm -hmm. Let's turn the heat up. Right. Let's see. That's what God allowed him to do on Job. Amen. Turn the heat up on him. True. You find Job in the first part there, the very first part. You know he's offering sacrifices. He's one of the richest men in the land. Right. And the devil says, yeah, but if you let me at him, mm. he'll curse you to your face. Right. That's what he thinks about you. Amen. Well, they're worshiping the Lord now. Come on. Old Brother Dave made it to church Sunday morning. Yeah. But you wait till I fight him on Monday. True. And I fight him on Tuesday. True. And I fight him on Wednesday. True. And I fight him on Thursday. Amen. And I fight him on Friday. Right. And I fight him on Saturday. Right. Then we'll see what he decides come Sunday morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll stop him. Brother Bruce. Dave gets up and he starts getting his suit on. Yeah. And the devil says, Oh, where's he going? Yeah. 
I know I fought him hard enough this week to get him to quit. Right. I know I done took enough. I done beat enough. I done scorned enough. I done pressured enough. I done turned the furnace up enough. What's he doing? He's deciding to go on in. Oh, hallelujah. He's deciding to go on anyway. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. I choose to trust him. You're going to have to make that choice today. Yes, sir. You're going to have to make that choice today. If you wait to go to church when you feel like it, you ain't never going to go. Amen. Amen. That's true. Funny to me how people don't feel like going to church on Sunday morning. Yeah. But they punch that time clock come Monday morning. Amen. Right, brother. They punch it Monday morning, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Jesus go fishing on Saturday or go working on Saturday. Come but on. come Sunday morning, I just can't make it. You know why? Because you chose not to. True. Stand before God yes, one day sir. and say, well, Lord, you know my job. All those excuses are going to yeah. fade into view. We will stand before Him with no excuse. Yes. No excuse. So Nebuchadnezzar's mad. He says, turn that furnace up. And He commanded the most mighty men. I'm in verse 20 if you follow me. Right. He commanded the most mighty men that were in His army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the fiery furnace. And, then, and these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Amen. Therefore, we came before the, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew the men. Listen, it slew the men that threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's how hot this was. It was so hot that it killed the men that threw them in there. Oh. Amen. Oh, my Lord, my God. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down in the midst of the, of the fire, into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Fell down, bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. Verse twenty-four. Somebody say, "Glory to God." Glory. You see, these old boys going. They go. They done held on till the going on comes on. Right. They done made a decision to trust God. Did it keep them from having to go into the fire? No. Oh. But we see something very peculiar with the rest of the story. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says in verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. It means he was astonished. He was shocked. He rose up in haste and he spake and said to his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, true, O king. Oh, these are shouting words right here. He said, Lo, I see four men right. loose, walking in the fire. They have no hurt. And the form of the fourth Sorry. is like the Son of God. Wow. <laughs> He's in the midst. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to me. When the devil sees you in that valley, Come on. he don't see you there alone. That's right, brother. When he turns to his demon and says, wait a minute. Now I know yeah. that we threw poor old brother Rod yeah. into that furnace. Right. We threw him into that trial. Come on. But he ain't the only one I see. Come on, preach. There's two there. Right. And one of them is like the Son of God. Right. Listen to me. Somebody asked one man, they said, Well, how in the world could King Nebuchadnezzar know what the Son of God, who the Son of God even was? How can he even know to even describe him like that? Listen, when you see him, you know. Amen. That's when you see him, you know. That's right, brother. When he knocked Paul down mm -hmm. on the road to Damascus, right. you know what Saul of Tarsus at that time asked him? Who art thou, Lord? Lord. <laughs> oh, he knew who he was. Amen. Right. He says there are four men in there. Come on. And you know the rest of it. Yes. He calls to him and says, Come out of there, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they come out of the fire. And the Bible says, You don't even smell like smoke. Come on. See, if you hold on, hold on. if you make the right choice in your higher decision, yes. you're going to come out of that fire. You ain't even going to smell like smoke. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. When I was reading that, I thought about this old song. A little boy is in the kitchen with his mama. Yeah. And his mama's telling him the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and old Abednego. 
Talking about how they threw into the fiery furnace. Yeah. Talking about how those three men came out. This is what the little boy said to her. Then I said, Mama, wait a minute. There's one thing that I must know. If three went in and three came out, then where'd that fourth man go? He said, I never will forget as Mama danced across the floor. These are the words I heard her say while shouting through the door. He's still in the fire and he's walking in the flames and he'll be there to help you when you call upon his name and he can still deliver by his almighty power. It's good to know that while here below that he's still in the the fire. Hallelujah. You ain't there alone. Come on, brother. You think you are, but you ain't. Come on, say it. And how do you know that you ain't? Come on. I will never leave you. Nor forsake I will never forsake you. I feel like I don't have anybody. How do you know that you have somebody? I will never leave you. I will never Come forsake you. Because of trusting his word. Yes. He is not a man Guaranteed. that he should lie. That's Amen. Right. He is not a man that he should lie. True. Last verse of that song says, Now, my friend, you may be destined to face life's hottest flame, but I'm glad that I can tell you through the power of his name. Right. Not one flame of fire will touch you. You'll come through it and you'll tell. Yesterday, today, forever, God is still alive and well. True. <laughs> my Lord. Hear these three, and I'm trying to close. Hear these three men facing the fire have a choice to make. Come on. You have a choice to make today. Amen. Many of you stand out. Many of you out there on the side of my voice, you stand in that same place. This sermon will be heard over the internet worldwide. Amen. It'll be heard on FM stations up in Virginia, FM stations here in Kentucky, AM stations. Praise the Lord. There are countless numbers of people out there that will hear this sermon that you're facing this. You go to church every Sunday. But the whole time, you're going through a trial like you've never faced before and you can't decide whether to go on or give up. Amen. God's saying, just hold on a little longer. Help is on the way. Oh, you're, you're, you're facing your ire of decision. Choose to trust Him in spite of of the circumstance. Choose to go on instead of giving up. Because if you give up today, you may lose it all. Right. Because you may not have another opportunity. True. Moses on the backside of the desert had a choice to make. Come on. When God spoke to him out of the fiery bush there, out of the burning bush, he didn't force Moses to go to Egypt to deliver Israel. The Bible says that Moses chose. Right. It says in Hebrews... The 11th chapter, 24 and 25, by faith Moses, when he was coming to Israel, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses chose to be the deliverer True. of Egypt. Right. That was his iron decision. If he had said, no, I'm not going, we'd never heard any more about Moses. He'd have died out there in the wilderness. You may die right where you're at. If you say, no, I'm not going on anymore. The four lepers, we talked about a service or two ago. They had a time of choosing. They were facing a valley of decision. One of them looked over to the other, Brother Dave, and he said, right. why sit we here till we die? Amen. We can get up and go on or we can sit right here and die. Right. You can choose to press on or you can choose to sit right where you're at and die. This Amen. Morning. Today, in the heat of the battle, choosing time. Am I going to go on or am I going to give up? Am I going to trust Him? Am I going to walk away? I've faced trials in my lifetime. The enemy has tried to convince me to give up. But like Paul, with the day that I've weighed the two, I've thought about it. And I have came to the conclusion that the cost of giving up is far more than I want to pay. Amen. Amen. Yes. The cost of going back, Mama, is far more than the cost of going forward. Paul said in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 18th verse, well, For I reckon, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 
This same preacher would say, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. Amen. And in case you wondered where Paul was talking about when he said, as it is written, it's found in Isaiah the 64th chapter in the 4th verse. This is the scripture that Paul was talking about. Listen how Isaiah put it. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Amen. Paul says over in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 that I have not seen, ear not heard, neither has it entered into your heart the things that God has in store for them that love him. He's quoting from Isaiah when Isaiah said 64 and 4, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have I seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. I'm telling you today, the joy is worth the journey. Amen. The victory is worth the fight. It's going to cost you much more to go back than it ever will to go on. Amen. What does it, even if you choose to walk away from God and you gain everything this world has to offer, the Bible has a scripture for that. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what would you give? What would you give in exchange for your soul? Your soul is priceless, and the decision that you make in the valley may determine your spiritual faith. Amen. Choose life. Choose life. Choose God. Choose to trust Him. I know it ain't easy. I'm not telling you today it's going to be easy. Nobody, ever, You know, they used to have an old country song, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Never promised you a rose garden. Well, we, we could change the words a little bit and say it to the church. Amen. I beg your pardon. He never promised us a rose garden. Amen. Right. He just promised He'd go with us all the way. Amen. That we would be victorious. Amen. Right. Trust His Word. Choose to trust Him today. Someone else this morning have something before we go. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen.